five year old what it's like dating in 20s versus 30s. What about on the flip side for like the females that are watching who deal with avoidant men? Call it ego protecting because that's exactly yeah, what you were saying. I, I think so you don't have to put yourself out there and take yeah. a risk. Welcome back to my channel. This video is actually sponsored by Win Coffee Supply. I'm really excited about this partnership because you guys know me and my coffee. These are really, really strong coffee beans from Vietnam and they are roasted in Brooklyn. I am gonna go with this one because it's their strongest. Will I die? Maybe. So I'm starting off by grinding my coffee beans. I opted for whole beans because I feel like the coffee just tastes better when you grind your own coffee. And then they sent me this Fien filter, which is a Vietnamese brewing tool that doesn't require any paper filters. You guys know I love to eliminate waste wherever possible. It comes with four different parts. It looks complicated, but I promise you it's so easy to use. Just add the lid and wait for that bad boy to drip and we're good to go. I kind of feel it going to my head already. <laughs> if you are a coffee drinker or connoisseur, I highly, highly recommend you check out Win Coffee Supply. They're hooking it up with a code you can use Freesia 10 for 10% off. It is a female founded small business, so I will link everything down below in the description and I hope that you guys will check them out because it's actually really good coffee. I took my first soul cycling class with the girls. Sega <laughs> photo. Oh my god. That's it's so, so bright. bright. It came to Whole Foods because it was way too windy and cold outside. So we're eating here. Hey guys. He's looking for Michelle right now. <laughs> all right, you can stare at the door all you want. Michelle's not coming. Michelle and Esther are on their way over because the weather is nice and we're gonna do a little girls day. This is also Michelle's Anna Luisa necklace set that I have been loving. It kind of adds a girlier touch to my outfits. To save time, I'm actually going to be meeting Esther and Michelle directly at the restaurant. Oh, <laughs> I think Michelle's here. Y'all don't know how to talk anymore. Who's I was like, I was coming out of the car and I could already hear the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. Hello there. All these cameras, dude. <laughs> Action. I have John here again. He is my go-to. <coughs> he choked on a, a Nature Valley. Bar. I mean, not my nose. I think I it's because you just like inhale when you eat. I do. You don't chew, you just. <coughs> I was watching a podcast or listening to a podcast yesterday. They were discussing the topic of dating under 30. Since John is over 30, I feel like it'd be nice to have like two very opposing perspectives because I'm a female mm -hmm. under 30 and you're a male over 30. Mm -hmm. When. You were in your 20s. What would you say your mindset was when it came to dating? I guess there's also like kind of different phases in your 20s, right? Because when you're like- For sure. Yeah, early 20s, you're a baby. Well. I guess we could talk about more so mid to, mid to late 20s. Mm. What was your mindset? Because I feel like that's when guys are starting to establish themselves. They're not quite there yet. Yeah. They're in building mode and building phase. So I feel mm -hmm. like- at least for me and what I observe, I generally don't prefer going for guys my age or like in their 20s for that reason. Mm. They're not ready to really prioritize a relationship and work on a relationship and commit to it. They think they are. Yeah. 
but they're really not. They have to establish themselves and they're working on figuring out who they are. They also have a lot of like ego issues going on that they're like not fully aware of. Mm -hmm. So we'd love to get your perspective on that. That's all right to a degree and obviously it varies from person to person, but I'll just speak from like my perspective. Mm -hmm. Mid twenties felt like I was finally getting to a place where I was comfortable with my career. So I was trying to date more seriously at that time too, because mm -hmm. I felt like, okay, everything's coming together and I want to be in a serious relationship too. I didn't think that I had it all figured out, but I was ambitious with personal life and also career. When I was looking for a partner or a dating partner, just looking for the total package, so to speak, from looks to career to personality to, you know, social circle was big in terms of how they carried themselves and who they were around. Part of it had like a power couple mindset. Would you say you agree with that now? No. Because, yeah, I was about to say, because that kind of power couple mentality is very ego-driven. I do not have that. Yeah, it's, very, it's like, <laughs> Anymore. it's like, it's all for show. <laughs> I feel like it's all shiny and dandy. Yeah, and I think, um, look, I don't think that that has to ever go away. Right. But I think that when you're striving for it and you're not quite there, you start to place a lot more value on certain characteristics mm -hmm. like how ambitious are they? What are they doing with their life? Quantifiable measures like that everyone sees from the outside. Maybe you place a little too much value on that and not as much on the interpersonal aspects of a person mm -hmm. and who they really are on the inside. Yeah, I feel like that's what guys around my age, mid 20s, late 20s do that. Like, I yeah. feel like they look at the package, but they don't think at all about other key elements in terms of like emotional maturity, mm -hmm. like things that girls are already thinking about. Like mm -hmm. I, I feel like it just takes guys a longer time to develop that and like even develop an awareness or understanding of that. Yeah. Like I think when I was like 25, I would be like, okay, this is where you are, but I feel like you have this potential and I'm only thinking about the potential and mm -hmm. not thinking about what you actually are mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the same thing for myself. Like when I thought about myself, I wasn't thinking about me today. I was thinking about me this is my trajectory and this is where I'll be in five years and that's the person that I thought I there was. What about on the flip side for like the females that are watching who deal with avoidant men mm -hmm. who are afraid of commitment or like just kind of run at the thought of settling down. Dating app culture too is like this. A mm -hmm. lot of guys like are not there to be too serious. Right. They're just kind of hopping around and playing. Because I feel like that's a little bit more prevalent. Yeah, in the 20s. In the 20s. I, though it still happens with guys in their 30s. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, and even 40s and 50s. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just responsibility. No one likes that word. <laughs> I think a lot of guys are self-aware enough to know that they're still figuring shit out. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of guys have an inadequacy kind of... You know, there's an expectation, societal expectation. As a man, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, or you should be this certain way. And when they don't hit those goals, you know, by the time at a, you know the timeline that they have in their head, I think a lot of times they feel like a self sabotage. You know, they they're not as committed to women because they feel like they have so much stuff to figure out themselves. And I think that's kind of like the underlying subconscious. I think a lot of guys won't say that outwardly. Mm -hmm. It's more like, oh, you know. I'm not looking for anything serious, but a lot of it comes from their own insecurity. Like, I don't feel like I've met my own standards. I don't necessarily believe someone else will accept me for who I am, even though they're not yeah. thinking about that or yeah. looking at that that way. So I think a lot of guys will just hop around to prevent themselves from getting yeah. in a certain type of situation. In the podcast I was listening to yesterday, one of the guests, her name is Shan Booty, and I love her. They were talking about self-sabotaging as well. Uh -huh. and. She was like, I hate the term self-sabotaging because it's almost kind of like a, I'm doing it on my own. Like I'm yeah, self-sabotaging yeah. and it's kind of almost like a flex in a way. Not, it's like a ego-driven flex kind of. It's oh, like, yeah. she was like, instead of using the term self-sabotaging, let's call it ego protecting because that's exactly yeah, what you were saying. I, yeah, yeah, I think it is. I think it's, you know, it's a form of self-sabotaging. It's ego protecting. So you don't have to put yourself out there and take yeah. a risk. It's so that you don't have to see you know fears that you have come mm -hmm. true mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so how would you say your dating mentality is now in your 30s i mean he's in a relationship now no it's definitely different i think i'm much more realistic about where things are rather than being lost in the sauce <laughs> before i 
get into a relationship, I'm less willing to take on risk and I'm less willing to get into something where I feel like she might not be ready or maybe I, I'm not ready because of something else that's going on in my life. I'm a lot more picky, I'm a lot more selective. But once I get into something, I feel like I'm more capable, more patient. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was 25, I think I had the same ambitions that I do now when I'm 32, but I can execute better on those ambitions than I could back then. So I think I'm much more, more able and willing to be patient and just kind of play the long game and not have it affect the relationship like it would have if I was in my 20, mid 20s. Do you think that you're more serious now though? Because I feel like most girls would be, that's their kind of uh, generalization. Uh huh. Guys in their 20s are not ready. Guys in their 30s are more ready. Yeah, I think it is. It, it, it is a generalization that broadly applies. A general rule never applies to the specific like instance yeah. or the individual, the gen general by definition is a blended kind of, you know, depending on what right. metric you're using, a blended average. It's it does average. You have people all over the spectrum. So every time you meet someone, you have to kind of do a individual analysis and it takes a lot more effort and it takes a lot more work and a lot more thought. I mean, we filter wherever we can because yeah. we don't want to do the work. Right. We don't want to sort. Even with like online shopping, for example, yeah. we'll do like color, price, whatever, mm -hmm. size, because we don't want to like take the time to sift through everything. I try not to take that approach and that's why I try to give people, I do have these generalizations in my head though, mm -hmm. because I see it, I observe it in my day to day and the generalizations are usually right as generalizations, mm -hmm. but it's like these one-off stories that like kind of keep me going and give things a chance. Age, for example, like you know me, I'm mm -hmm. always like, I need to date someone like 30 and Older, above, yeah. but every now and again, <laughs> I will, <laughs> I will give. <laughs> but it's like me trying to give individuals and like individual situations uh -huh. a chance. I don't know, maybe generalizations and filters are there for a reason because like, you know, it does kind of help. <laughs> Explain to a five-year-old what it's like dating in 20s versus 30s. I'd say 30s, I would use the word like realistic, but I'm trying to figure out like, just you're just a lot more hopeful in your 20s. I would just say hopeful. Fake it till you make it in your 20s? Yeah, you have a lot more fake it till you make it. You're hopeful, you're trying, you know, there's a lot more effort. And in your 30s, I think you, you kind of go for things that you can see within reach. I always compare dating to just like work. Even with the young professionals, fresh mm -hmm. grads, it's the fake it till you make it kind of mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you take on a lot more than you actually are qualified mm -hmm. for, but you end up learning on the job. Yeah. I feel like that applies to 20 year olds, mm -hmm. 20 year old men. And then in your thirties, you actually have 10 years of experience. You have the resume. What you see is more of what you get. I feel like in your thirties. Is that now, a good Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, think, and I think that you kind of go for what you can see as yeah, well. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, If you have to generalize. At the end of the day, it's case by case. Very, I guess. very much so. Thanks for always being in my videos. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, me. as always. And Thanks I'll for watching. See you in the next one. See you in the next one. <laughs>